my rating is already 1716 because there is a game that I haven't shown you yet where I went over 1700. Uh, I told you in the previous video that I would show you the game where I go above 1700 and I had it ready but I happen to play one game right now and uh, it's a fantastic game and I couldn't wait to show you so uh, I'm commentating now this game first and you're gonna so see this game first I will show you the game where I go above 1700 later but I had to show you this one as you can see this is my normal opening the opponents are actually quite kind of good in this game and you will see also in the previous game that I played the one that I used to go above 1700 uh, the, the opponents were high rated there as well so this proves also that the, my strategy uh, works also for uh, high rated players as well so uh, as you can see here king safety, fianchetting the bishop knight up, knight out already, the knight, this knight was out already because I, wanted, I want him to be ready to jump to the king side and this is my normal move this is uh, the knight maneuver that I play to bring the knight to the king side and defend the king as well <coughs> As you can see in this game, um, blue is likely to be the most dangerous person because um, I'm directly on his right and usually attacking the players on the right is good and he's the highest rated player as well and right now he promoted and I expected green to take the queen right now because that would make sense right taking the blue king with a pawn it does make sense, right? a lot of sense right? no to green, it didn't make sense it didn't even make sense to push the pawn and try to promote himself he just decided that it was time to develop the knight at that point so, that was good so, what I do now is I just uh, expand my, start to expand my pawns so, and also use this bishop here to defend the knight because I'm always kind of scared that people would take and then I take with the pawn and leaving my king very open so I push so that uh, I can defend with the knight too now I'm using, I'm using that uh, the d pawn the furthest pawn to the side for me uh, to support my other pawns as I, as I showed you in previous games as well uh, no one is really attacking anyone else there isn't anyone targeting someone else and that's always a little bit dodgy for me because you know if people fight each other it's good for me if people don't fight each other and just grow up in material and strength then it can be dangerous because with the patient approach that I have if people have patient approaches as well but more successful it can be kind of scary as usual now that I can I expand towards the king uh, I, I expand the uh, queenside pawns now that I can and I will show you in, a, in another game the game that I was talking about earlier uh, I pushed one pawn only and promoted uh, but in this case it's uh, it's not really recommended because the, the the center of the board is controlled by uh, blue and green you see this line is controlled by blue this file is controlled by green so it's gonna be very hard to promote using only one pawn so that's why I'm keeping my pawns together the bishop there is way better than before and doesn't have to defend the knight anymore because there is a pawn here now so it's fine my knight is not under attack and to be honest, right now, this pawn is a bit annoying me because I can't push this guy up. Because one thing you have to keep in mind, also, now it's very clear, but usually try not to push pawns where they can be attacked by other pawns from behind. So even if this pawn wasn't here, this pawn wasn't here, I would think twice about pushing this pawn because it could push this pawn twice and then attack my pawn from behind. So that's something you should keep in mind as well 
So green castle in my side. Uh, blue having some pressure with this diagonal story towards here, and green maybe having some pressures, some pressure on these diagonals as well. So I'm not really feeling too confident about this position. I'm not really satisfied. I play this only because it gives me the chance, maybe the opportunity at some point to push the pawn. But as you can see here, blue with this move, that I think uh, it's a good move for blue. Uh, puts more pressure on me. And now I think I made a dodgy decision. But I don't really know what the best move here is. Because I can't just let him take, I think. Because if I do, then I would have to take with this pawn. And, and this pawn becomes... You see, when I take the pawn here, will become the base of my pawns, and it's kind of too centered to be the base. Also, because it's under attack by the rook, possibly, and the way I can defend it is only with the bishop here, but it can be kicked away. So I don't like I don't like my base to be here. So I prefer to have a very solid pawn here, and a pawn here that can be supported with the other pawn. I don't know if it was the best decision. Maybe there was uh, something better. Right now, the bishop was, as I say, hanging. It wasn't really hanging, but, you know, it's always good to keep all your pieces defended so the opponents don't even try to attack them. Because the, if they do, then other opponents might attack other pieces at the same time. For example, blue could have played here, attacking my bishop, and then green could have taken here, and then I'm losing material uh, for sure. So as you can see here, Green with this move um, makes it impossible for me to push because I don't want to give the opponents any chance to exchange pieces. So, yeah. So I'm not feeling too confident right now because green has some diagonals against me. Blue looks like he's in my territory here. And my, my usual solid pawn structure is not that solid because this pawn is isolated almost because I can't push this guy and this pawn is isolated for sure so it could be better I wish that soon someone would attack someone else but it's not me some two people would start to attack each other so that I can I can increase or I can increase my space or do something to improve my situation because right now I have too much pressure from too many pieces here I had to move the queen because blue was threatening to push the pawn because if you push the pawn then it was threatening my my queen with his uh, expendable queen and then it could take my pawn as well or push or do something weird so now if he pushes I can take green looks like he wants to promote another pawn that's that's very nice for him and yellow looks like he wants to promote as well yellow attacking green's queen he needs to do something about that but can just retreat I think and it's, it decides to use that square because it pins the knight it pins the knight because the, the bishop is not defended so that's also a good example of why I want to keep all my pieces defended all the time yellow keeps pushing and is grabbing the center basically so with those two pawns and now since my rook is not here anymore that I move it to the side and I defended the bishop with the queen I can push the pawn and support this pawn that was a, a weakness for me and also now that the bishop and the queen are not on the same diagonal of my knight I can also push my pawn maybe at some point so my pawns are connecting again, finally. 
but as you can see I have no chance to promote right now because this pawn is blocked can't push and even if I can push this guy up then there is the uh, green pawn taking and stuff so or yellow as well taking so it looks like a very dodgy game in my opinion uh, so far so it looks like uh, I'm struggling to find a plan I'm struggling to find space I, f I think many of the players right now have the same problem as you can see yellow is kind of stuck green made this move because he's stuck as well blue blue made this move I think he's stuck as well as you can see all these pieces that are just cramped all here so maybe he's threatening to come in but I have enough defenses so it's a very waiting game with blue and green with extra queens but no one exchanged material apart from me and blue one pawn only so it's a very tense game it's like everyone is afraid of making mistakes or afraid of attacking as you can see here green starts to make a move and here the turning point of the game green attacked yellow and this is something you don't want to have because you should always think can my opponent any of my opponents attack one of my pieces for example my queen here can't really be attacked by any piece or it can be attacked by the bishop if it comes in here but then I can take so now blue took a knight and I was really hoping that yellow would take with the with the bishop the queen instead of moving with the queen because for me blue is the danger so I wanted blue to lose some power and that's exactly what happened but now I can, as, as I said, I have time to expand the center a little bit more. The pressure on my pieces is less because the tension is now over here. So now blue makes this move, I think, because he's just mad at yellow. Because yellow could have just taken back with the... I don't know, but wait, if he took back with this, then green would have taken the bishop with the queen. So I don't know why blue made this move then. Because it's clear that green is going to move away, so... Mm, interesting. Anyways, now yellow is in a very bad situation. With the the, the only knight remaining is pinned. The the bishop is not defended. Uh, the rooks are not coordinated. The bishop here is kind of open as well. So, not good at all. And now, unfortunately, if I push this guy green takes if I push this guy blue takes so it's still not really pleasant for me but at least some tension was released and somehow yellow manages to lose him in a very very few moves lose most of his pieces so now green puts even more pressure on this diagonal knowing that the bishop now is defended by the rook but the queen is only worth one point so if he can take his five points rook takes and then bishop takes green will get 10 points while yellow will get only one point so that's bad for him and now blue attacking the pawn and green actually was also attacking the knight so yellow had to defend the knight and now blue can take the pawn <clears throat> I still can't push my pawns unfortunately and for example I can't even push this guy because there is the bishop taking so I'm just I'm just waiting for the right moment right now the moment is coming uh, it's getting better and better for me but it's not the right moment just yet you can see it's not the right moment it's still too crowded over here and I can't expand my pawns and I can't really actually attack pieces in general or without preventing any exchange so the game is it's gonna end quite quickly now as you can see so stuff is gonna happen really quickly so now yellow is desperate it's just taking pieces randomly and I get one pawn for free and 
there is pressure on the rooks so that's really good for me so i was like okay let me pick up some material from yellow as well since you're all since blue and green are enjoying the party of taking pieces why don't you let me take some pieces as well he took another pawn for example and now the knight is completely free it can be taken with this the knight was the only piece defending the rook so i can take the rook and the bishop can be taken as well and that's what happens green takes the bishop but unfortunately he defends the rook so here i had the difficult choice between taking this rook but it was defended taking this rook but it was defended or taking this rook if it was defended or something else and after my 15 seconds of delay went off and I lost a few seconds I decided to do something else to move away my bishop they would, this would mean that blue could take a rook for free so getting 5 points as well so now green is on 19 points blue 11 points I have only 2 points unfortunately I wasn't really able to uh, exploit the situation uh, yellow's situation but I don't really know how I, I could have got more points without exchanging material so now a knight fell off here as well so lo uh, yellow lost a knight as well the rook is on pre so blue can take the rook as well so it's not really going well and green takes the chance to promote because now he knows the rook is falling as well so uh, yellow as an option of taking a queen that is only worth one point because it was a pawn or losing a rook sorry and losing a rook or saving the rook so he lost the rook so now it, he takes he takes the queen so he got a queen now so that's good for him but it's not gonna help at all but as you can see the, the center is clearing up a little bit more now so now I could have the chance to push this guy up but as you can see I'm way behind on points I get to take a pawn and it's not the value of the pawn that is important but it's the fact that now I can push this pawn up and then maybe take and push again and that chance is a very good opportunity for me but now something incredible is going to happen and yellow is going to make an incredible move followed by an incredible move by green so it's not right now it's very soon though it's next turn i think so right now my, my in my mind i was thinking like okay as you can see from my mass movements i was thinking okay let's push the pawns now in the center it's time to push the pawns it's time to move my queen away and push the pawn of the, the side pawn here so that i can do something because i need to react it's really good that i'm not more than 20 points away from the other guys because if i'm more than 20 points then it's scary but still i need to do something now it's been too long without any points any good points and now yellow takes and now it's mate over here all right but it's a queen sacrifice so i could catch up the the, the deficit but it's a queen sacrifice because then yellow could take the only chance i have is that green would check like this like this like this or that and it does check so it, gave, it gives me an incredible opportunity to check mate 20 points jumping the lead of the point system taking yellow's queen and then having to fight only against green and that's incredible and this is actually this is exactly what happens i take the queen and now what i was thinking okay let's leave yellow alone now poor poor guy he, he just suffered too much now let's focus on green and once i can get rid of queen, uh, green or at least some of the material like i was already ex uh, thinking about exchange as you can see my muscle was on the bishop because i wanted to exchange uh, the bishop for the rook because uh, if i can uh, get rid of the material but unfortunately uh, green moves the rook away uh, and 
green is thinking about checkmating yellow to get the points that he needs to overtake me again. The problem is that you should have thought about the thing that I said a few games ago where if you check, be sure the opponent can't checkmate. And that's exactly what green didn't do. This is the only square yellow can go to. As you can see, I, I saw that during the game and I could check it. So as you can see, checkmate again, stealing checkmate once again. So now I'm 44 points and that's game over because next turn I'm going to resign and green is going to be 40 points and that's it. So I got really lucky and as you can see I didn't do anything at all. I just waited for the right moment to checkmate and checkmate again. And uh, all I did was two checkmates because 44 points is just the two checkmates and four points that is just pawns. So it was good. I am now 1743, so my rating is going up and I'm so close now to top 10. Uh, top 10 is like about about 1770. Um, next time I will show you the game I played to go above 1700. It's a very nice game because I uh, promoted a pawn at the beginning of the game, not really at the beginning of the game, but soon after the beginning. and. Uh, I learned some techniques from the very top guys, uh, watching the very top guys, so I used some of those techniques in, the, in that game, and uh, I'll see you there.